Hi, I'm Brian Lasseur, president of Xenix Software, where we're focused on reducing the cost of software testing by making testers more productive. One of the most fundamental reasons why organizations may not be getting the most from their investment in test automation is in the choices they make when deciding what and what not to automate. Yet those choices are critical success factors. In this two-part presentation, I'll provide guidelines for making the right choices to ensure that your next automation testing project gets off to a good start. We'll start out by reviewing the reasons that we automate tests in the first place and then compare efficiency and effectiveness of manual and automated testing. That will give us the right background for evaluating test automation candidates, which we'll take up in part two of this presentation. One of the primary reasons that we invest in test automation is for the productivity boost that it provides our test organizations by reducing the labor-intensive task of manual testing. Repeatability is another benefit, especially when it comes to verifying bug fixes, where it's important that a retest be executed in exactly the same way as the test that originally identified the defect. Automated testing improves efficiency by shortening test cycles and increases effectiveness by providing more time for manual testers to improve test plans and participate in ad hoc and exploratory testing. It also increases flexibility by enabling the organization to make changes late in the release cycle, assured that a full regression test can be executed without missing target dates. Automated testing is more effective than manual testing. It's simulating application usage over long periods of time to ensure application stability. After all, automated tests can be run 24-7 with no breaks or meetings to attend. Most testers will admit to getting complacent about testing aspects of a target application that rarely provide problems. We all tend to shortcut test cycles when we've tested a feature over and over and of course that's how regressions creep into our applications. Environment testing is a good case in point. Not many of us enjoy executing the same manual tests over and over on different hardware OS browser combinations and as we'll see later in the presentation it's a great candidate for automated testing. Accountability is another reason to automate, especially in organizations where it's important to document test results for audit or regulatory review. Finally, automated tests can capture domain expertise to preserve knowledge of how the application is supposed to behave as staff is reallocated after the initial project implementation or as the organization experiences staff turnover. One of the primary ways to decide whether or not to automate a set of tests is to compare the dollar cost of automating versus not automating. I've seen many organizations estimate the cost of test development time and compare it to the time that it takes to execute tests manually. It's not as easy to make that comparison as it might seem at first. To make an effective assessment, you need to project future costs on both sides of the equation. On the automation side, it's important to consider the cost of maintaining the tests. And to do that, it helps to understand the nature and frequency of change for the target application. On the manual testing side, you need to consider how often the tests will be executed. For example, do the same set of tests need to be run against different hardware OS combinations? If the tests are browser-based, do they need to be run against multiple browser version combinations? In addition, it's important to predict staff turnover. New software projects are often better staffed in the initial phase than later in the application lifecycle. Domain experts might be brought in to educate software developers and testers who may or may not be permanent employees. A significant amount of domain expertise is acquired in the process 
of developing and deploying the initial release. But over time, through staff reallocation or attrition, some of that knowledge is lost. Manual tests, having been written for someone with a certain level of experience, may be difficult for new team members to follow because details are often omitted. On the other hand, automated tests preserve expertise in the actions encoded in their steps. Keeping in mind that automated tests can run 24-7 and be distributed to multiple target machines, compare the length of a test cycle with and without automated tests. Shortened test cycles have an impact on the company's bottom line, especially if there are competitive or perhaps seasonal opportunities at stake. The importance of software quality cannot be understated. Application features can result in loss of business or revenue, property damage, physical injury, or death. Even minor defects have the potential to impact the reputation and image of your company. The level of effort to execute a manual test varies on a wide range. Some tests are labor intensive because of the sheer number of steps to execute. Others require attention to minute details or precise timing. These types of tests are better left for the machine and should be given a higher priority when choosing tests to automate. An automated test will signal an error even if a single character is incorrect, and they ensure that the same exact test is repeated every time. And since the entire regression test can be repeated quickly, software changes can be accepted late in the release cycle. In the first part of this presentation, we focused on the reasons why we automate tests and compared the efficiency and effectiveness of automated and manual testing. In part two, we'll evaluate good and poor candidates for automation and look at some examples. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you would like to learn about how Xenix Software is reducing the cost of software testing by making testers more productive, visit us at www.xenix.com.